You are listening to Peak One Sports. What is up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Sports Page on the Peak One Sports Network. I am Dan Boyer, aka Neon Super Shrimp. And y'all know I hate talking sports and everything all by myself, so let's just uh, make sure we get the boys in here a little bit. Yes, sir. The boys. What's going on? We got Ashton, Nix, Chris Robb, and Ross Bates joining us again this week. And I want to kick this off with a fun little question. I kind of poised this to uh, Ashton the other day. Pinball, sport or not? Like the computer pinball? I mean, or... Well, that no, that like opens up a whole nother floodgate there, actually, because I was on the side of like actual arcade pinball. Sure, yeah, because yeah. you play it long enough, there is some stamina stamina involved. Right. Uh, obviously, it's co- for me. If it's competition. You can count it as a sport if you're using some sort of. So you were talking about the arcade where you hit the size and. and then, yeah, you know, but yeah, you bring in the computer and, game. I don't know if for me that counts as a sport because there's no like exercise. Not that pinball arcade is a lot of exercise but it is some you're standing up for it for the most part right yeah yeah well ashton i mean would you consider a madden player a professional athlete that's what i'm saying if it's a video game no but pinball you're doing a lot more than madden you know if you go like in for sure old school nintendo 64 with the vest rumble pack like hey i mean that could that could kind of qualify i don't know some of those VR things, those experiences, you know, where you're like, oh, you yeah. put on the helmet and you got to move all around that's and intense. everything. That's intense, yeah. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring up, uh, y'all keep well, going. Maybe, I'm going to look up the definition. Sport. But man, I'm going to say, I'm going to say sport, right? Because it definitely takes a level of like skill, understanding, like some hand eye coordination. There's a ball. So, and at, there is yeah, a ball. The, if there's a ball in there, like, like it's, I don't know that's by default, but it helps out. But it's an athletic activity requiring skill or physical prowess and often of competitive nature. I think the only question there is, is it an athletic activity? You can get get a good sweat in playing pinball, though, I think. I think think if we're talking about playing, like, actual pinball, not the computer game pinball, yeah, it definitely takes, like, I mean, especially, like, standing there for long periods of time, you get, like, a real good game going. I would imagine you got to stand there for like an hour or two, you know, all sport Hmm. is competition, but not all competition is sport football talk with Bo. I mean, that's that's a good, it's a good point right there. But but back on Chris's point of, uh, you can break a sweat doing it. I mean, I've broken a sweat playing Madden before. If you get intense, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, Don't forget there are sports without balls though, you know, like any car racing, and you see those I mean, drivers after they hockey, get out, bro. They're beat up, I mean, yeah. 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 Oh, car. Yeah, I, I've had that discussion about is, is auto racing a sport? Like, it gets like you have to have some athletic. I mean, athletic, but you have to be in shape for it because you sweat so much. You sweat so much in that car. Yeah. It, it's intense. It's it's ridiculous. Like I, I NASCAR is definitely a sport in my mind. But I used to say, is it on ESPN? Or is it on Fox? Is it on a, a channel? Just like, is bowling a sport? I can they also, a sport. It's a, yeah. I also was up late one night and they had, um, you know, they have pillow fighting as like a, as a like a professional pillow fighting now. Yeah, go look it up. It have you, have you seen a competitive right. tag? Competitive That's intense. Tag. It's like they're running in, in kind of steps and scaffolding and stuff. That mm-hmm. gets intense. I just I just wait for them to like get cut off at the head or whatever. Just yeah. get clotheslined. Yeah. This is making me thinking of uh, American Gladiators or whatever the show was when I was a yeah. kid. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then there's a there's a that. documentary on uh, Netflix about that, and they really? those guys were like living that. like rock stars back in the eighties and early nineties. It's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, before we get too much into our topics for this week and everything, uh, Ross has got some good advice for us this week. Uh, as far as like placing bets goes, uh, Ross, you uh. Like to use your gut when you do that, or what do you? I actually, Dan, I'm glad you asked because I do not bet with my gut. I use Betalytics dashboards to allow me to quickly identify the top graded best bets and hottest trends. Uh, Betalytics actually uses AI machines to learn algorithms and create accurate game simulations, player prop projections, and uh, betting line evaluations. 
Uh, so use the promo code PEAK1 for 25% off when you sign up today. And you can be just like me. Awesome. I love mm -hmm. it. Ashton, you know any good uh, dog trainers? Um, I know what may be the best dog trainer I've in history. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I, I don't want to overhype it, but you can say goodbye favorite. to unruly behavior and hello to a well-mannered pup. The Dapper Dog Academy stands out as a top-notch canine training institute located in Cleburne and serving the DFW Metroplex. Owner and trainer Corey Bennett has nearly 10 years' experience helping your canine companions become the best version of themselves. With personalized training programs tailored to suit your pup's unique personality and needs, Corey is, com uh, is committed to helping your pet reach their full potential. Contact Corey and the Dapper, Dag Dapper Dog Academy on Facebook. Or call and schedule a consultation today. All the over, uh, all the info is in the description box below. Say that five times real fast. Beautiful, I know, right? And uh, Chris, any idea where I can find awesome opinions on all kinds of sports topics and everything? Man, uh, where was I supposed to say that? Right here at Peak One Sports. Find us on all social media. Oh platforms, my! Facebook, God. YouTube. Hey, I was like, and wherever like, you watch. To be fair, like, he texted you after the show. If you're not watching no, your phone right now, so, to be fair. You know but That's yeah, drop us a like, drop us a follow. Like, feel free to share, subscribe, uh, whatever like, it is right that here, you guys do. Like at Peak One, of course. But then I was like, did I miss a spot? But no. Yeah. Yeah. One. Follow us on all channels. Uh, YouTube. Um, we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. Everywhere. Peak One Sports. Um, LinkedIn, even if you use LinkedIn, uh, we have all the shows, um, you know, all week, Wednesdays, on the weekends, even um, just, you know, look us up. Uh, we talk sports. We talk, you know, all sports, not just Dallas. We talk sports worldwide. So uh, Peak One Sports, Instagram, you can find us there as well. Um, TikTok, we're taking over TikTok. So make sure you guys tune in to us, subscribe, and all of our ads are down low. So just tune in. Perfect. I love it. All right. Well, just before we actually start getting into a lot of this, I just want to point out the uh, sweet Jersey uh, thing we got going on. Everybody kind of repping the locals. I love it. Yes. Uh, Mavs and Stars obviously got uh, some uh, playoff hopes coming up real real soon. Uh, Mavs got three <laughs> games left. They two games left actually. Uh, right. Uh, they just beat, just beat the heat. So on a five game win streak right now, which yeah, is awesome. two games left. They're 50. Um, yeah. 50 and, 30. yeah. 50 and 30, the Mavs and stars have both won 50 games this year. The first time that's happened since the 06, 07 season, which is what this Jersey is from. I made, I made a calculated decision not to wear my Luca Jersey because the Mavs were playing the heat. So maybe a flashback, but not, like, not that like 06. That. Series, was the 2011 a, series, right? That's the that's the year after when Dirk won MVP. Yeah, yeah, Dirk won. Uh, yeah, I think they got seven. outed. Uh, let's so not Dirk talk about MVP, that. and they let's got. Not talk about. It. Don't worry about let's the Warriors. Not talk about that. About yeah, someone. no, that didn't happen because we're talking about 2011. Right? We're talking yeah. about 2011. <laughs> yeah, we well, kind of first thing I wanted to kick off with was uh, the NCAA finals. Obviously, ended on uh, Monday. Uh, well, for men's on Monday, women's on Sunday. Uh, y'all's thoughts on the the final four games uh, on Saturday? I actually thought that uh, that Bama UConn game was honestly it was probably it was probably the best game all weekend uh, finals included in my opinion. But uh, yeah, thoughts? it was surprising. Yeah, yeah I yeah. thought I thought Bama was they're just gonna wipe the floor with Bama, but I guess they saved that for the Purdue game <clears throat> for yeah. sure. Yeah, UConn. That's probably the most. That's I mean, it easily. Is the best team since the Florida teams uh, that went mm -hmm. back to back. Um, they were yeah. just just dominant. Like they, there was no close game. You know, throughout the tournament. You know, the Bama game was a, that was a great game. But you know, the they kind of pulled away. They, they just outclassed them. But um, you know, as far as the Purdue game, I kind of figured that because UConn's a team. Purdue, they're they're a good team, but they have one great player that they try to play through, and you know, their their game plan of just letting him get whatever and you know, not helping and closing out and, you know, just staying home on threes, you know, that was, that was brilliant. So, uh, you know, hats off to them. 
Yeah, they they played really good defense. I, I feel like that's what ended up. I mean, let's be honest, right? Offense wins games, defense wins championships, yeah. and that's yeah. really what UConn managed to do against Bama was they were able to hold that offense down just enough to get over them. But, man, it was a close game, really competitive. Um, Ross, any thoughts on the finals? Did you, did you catch any of the NCAA? Well, <clears throat> I got to listen to a little bit of the game after work. Um or I guess clips of the game. And to me, it sounded like it was really close the whole game, right? Didn't uh, Purdue jump out a little bit at the end there? Uh, I mean, yeah, UConn had a, had a pretty good handle on the game for the majority of it. Uh, Purdue, Purdue pushed back there just before uh, halftime. And then uh, coming out of the half, honestly, the, the wheels kind of came off for Purdue. Yeah, Zach Eady had really a really good first up. half. And that second yeah, half, he was just struggling. I just yeah. can't believe that like Dan picked Purdue to win it all. But, you know, that wasn't enough points, I guess, to like win the bracket. What happened there? Well, because most yeah. people had a lot of people had Purdue going pretty far anyway. So, yeah, there were there weren't a lot of points for him to gain. Yeah, uh, I was going to share the uh, the bracket here. Let me see if I can. Nope, that's not the right way to do this. Nope, still the wrong way. Whoa. Here we go. This is what yeah, I got whiplash there for a second. Throwing us everywhere. Oh. I know, right? Just yeah, I don't know what I, I was know. thinking when I had Arizona. What was I thinking? Oh, you know what is it? Just because I have too many people now, or is it? I was trying to get the points. That's what I was thinking because you know if Arizona would have made. There we go. Right, That's what I was. There looking you for. go. Yeah. Okay. It is, it is. So yeah, because if you're if you're looking here, um, Robbie managed to get uh, first place here. Um, Ashton and I were talking about it. I was Shout trying to out figure Robbie. out uh, why first and second place here um, was you know the same points. But uh, Robbie put in a final score of 65-70. My cousin Rachel here forgot to put in a score. She pulled a Ross, and so her score was 0-0. Zero, zero. So uh, she naturally came in second that's place. That's the here. first time I've ever seen that that, that tiebreaker matter. That's so have I, actually. It, at uh, least I've, in I've, competitions I've been in. Man. Yeah, I've I've never really seen a, a points tie like this. Um, yeah. I've, I've definitely seen uh, teams like or you know people pick the same champion, but I, I don't think I've ever seen like a, a tie like this. And I mean, honestly, this is a pretty good score considering like one ninety two is a perfect score. Uh, That's yeah, impressive. This is pretty 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 good. Yeah. yeah. So shout out to uh, Robbie and my cousin Rachel uh, coming in one two here. Then uh, I'm pretty impressed, guys. As a group, we got number three for our, our picks here. Um, I good. definitely feel like I got to point out that I feel like on a number of these picks, I was outvoted because I was definitely like, no, it's this team. And you guys were like, no idiot. Like, <laughs> and so props <laughs> to you guys, say here. It, but I uh, fought it pretty well. <laughs> right. Uh, so props to you guys here for talking me out of bad decisions and uh, getting us up to third place here. Um, Ashton came in sixth, followed by Ross in seventh, who didn't even pick a champion. Um, it was Ooh. all or nothing for me, kind of like Ross was saying. I had Purdue, and if man, if Purdue would have actually won against UConn, um, I would have, I would have won first place. Uh, would have been, would have been the winner. Would have been talking a lot of shit tonight, but you know, here we are instead. I'm, I'm humbled by eighth place. And then, uh, Chris, honestly, I feel like if you hadn't been so like daring with this Arizona pick, yeah, I was, uh, I was very much thinking about you know just, just trying to get points, being you know being a little, I guess. Like you said, daring, but um, that's just how it is. You, you know, you go big or go home. That's how I feel. So it is what it is. I know, right? But honestly, I, I, I mean, I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. Hopefully we can get more people involved next year. Uh, Ashton and I will kind of keep brainstorming and working a little bit to see if we can't come up with like a first place prize or something, T-shirt, or we'll work something out. We'll see what we can do. But uh, I really just want to shout out here, right? Um, everybody's got a pretty good chance here. My cousin Rachel was telling me she picked UConn because she was making a sale for work. And the person she happened to be talking to on the phone said, oh, pick UConn. And so she did. What? So, yeah. So it takes like n like n no skill whatsoever to like do well in this thing. Everybody's got a chance. Uh, so, you know, if you're ever thinking like, oh, I don't really know anything about college basketball, man, I don't think anybody <laughs> knows enough to do like real damage on a March Madness bracket. I think everybody's got a pretty good opportunity. Uh, so, you know, take a shot, have some fun with us next year. Uh, maybe we give you a shout out and everything for your performance uh, against the rest of us. 
just have some fun with us, you know? So let's do it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I had I had a good time. I don't know about you guys. It, you know, it wasn't. You know, I mean, I I wish I wish my bracket would have done better. Uh, I definitely felt after like the first round or two, I was just not doing very well, and yeah. having the opportunity to even come in first with that Purdue game uh, in the finals uh, had me pretty pumped actually. And then that second half of that game happened, and I was like, oh, Purdue just doesn't want it, man. UConn, UConn was a beast this year, just un unstoppable uppity Yankees fan UConn is unreal I think that's that's probably a good astute observation there so uh yeah thanks to everybody that played congratulations to uh UConn and uh shout out to uh South Carolina for the women's team for winning their national championship and uh that kind of moves me into this semi Another topic I wanted to talk about, uh, Caitlin Clark, obviously her college career is over now. She's set a, a record for most scored points by anyone in D1 basketball, male or female, with 3,951 points. Um, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about like records, records being broken and kind of the response that people can sometimes have to it. Um, for those of you that didn't see, Lynette Woodard was the previous owner of the uh you know most points scored um record and she kind of came out at like the senior night for caitlin clark and made these comments about like she didn't feel like her record had been broken and that because she had to play with a men's ball there was no three-point line it was oh, a different wow. era all these different things so she was basically saying like she didn't think her record was broken and i mean to me that feels like a, a bad look to have she made, um, yeah. i didn't know she's yeah. Uh, yeah she also yeah. this record was also set back in 1981 um so the this record stood for 40 plus years and caitlin clark has finally broke it uh, but i just kind of wanted to get your opinions and takes and everything feel free to comment um just kind of on lynette woodard's comments after kind of supposedly supposed to be passing on the torch to someone who's arguably brought the most attention to women's basketball and arguably women's sports um, in a long, long time, arguably ever. Yeah. Um, and just that, I don't know, just the response, your, your thoughts on, on what it's, she said. It's not a good look. Um, that's, that's really what you need to leave people like us to talk about and debate. Like she should have, like, like, I don't know what level of fame she has right now, but if she has any sort of assistant or publicist or, whatever she should have had them been like planting that to say to certain media members uh because i mean not that she's wrong i mean there's some level to it it's just like the the you know wilt chamberlain why why isn't wilt chamberlain the best player you know nba player in history which some people may say he is it was just a different game i mean yeah you didn't have the level of competition and i'm not saying that's a knock on wilt because he obviously didn't have a three-point line either that I mean, he probably wouldn't have been shooting three pointers anyway. But it's just a different era, and she's right. I mean, it's an extent, but I mean, the fact that you you brought up Dan that it hadn't been broken in over forty years, so that makes it a significant achievement, right? Um, yeah, it's it, it's a no win situation for her, for her to come out like for you to say, wait, 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 wait. Anytime you have to come up and and say, no, 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 no. Look at me, I'm doing, you know it's never a good look. Like if somebody else would have kind of come and say that no, nothing bad on her, we would have debated it anyways, but sure. I'd never heard of her before this. So I, I don't know that it really mattered that she broke her record. Yeah. Yeah. That's like Kareem. Like if, it, if Kareem would have said something about LeBron passing him, like, yeah. Oh, he had a three point line. He shot more three. And it's just like, like you said, it's a different game. And that's, I mean, that's, she, it sounds like she's hating a lot, a little bit because, I feel like she might be a little jealous about how much fame Caitlin has brought to women's yeah. basketball. And she she did all that. And that's a great accomplishment that she had. But at the same time, like no one like that's probably the maybe the second or third time I've heard of that name ever. So, like, you know, and I hear Caitlin Clark's name every day on ESPN. Well, Caitlin Clark breaking that record brings yeah. more notoriety to her right yeah and it's exactly. not like oh she sucks she didn't have the record anymore exactly if anything yeah. it just brings us like oh yeah she was a great basketball yeah, she player great, yeah and, so, and where she go to college do you know uh don't make me lie to you okay well i'm gonna look but it, yeah but like it's just, it's just 
overall, it's just kind of a bad look. I wish she would have came out and did something different because I'm gonna say I mean, Georgia Tech. You learn you you look way better when you're like passing on the torch. Like you know, Kareem had the ball and gave it to LeBron. That was that was a cool moment. Oh, she played but, for um, Kansas. Oh, she played hey. for Kansas. Oh, uh, makes sense. But anyway, <laughs> that was a total guess. I just thought, you yeah, know, I no, just thought sense. I'll shoot yeah. my shot. Georgia not Tech. a good look. Yeah. Yeah, Not I don't know. Sure. I agree. I think, like, I mean, you could say the same about any Hall of Famer in any sport. Um, you know, like, some think of some of the best quarterbacks of all time, right? That are still alive and kicking. You know, I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't picture Roger Staubach or you know Joe Montana or somebody like that coming out and saying, "Well, you know, this Trevor Lawrence kid is good, but I mean, you know, it's just a different game today." Um, yeah, I agree. I think it's a bad look and it really, it just kind of shows it's like, to me, it sounds like a jealousy thing, you know, where it's like, I had the record for my entire life and now here comes this girl and she gets it. And, you know, they're going to give me a chance to speak and I'm going to take that opportunity to just let everybody know that like, yeah, yeah you know, I still have it. I don't, I don't know. I don't like it. That sucks, no, yeah. I don't like it at all. Yeah. So. And I mean, honestly, I, I think, uh, Chris, you had a, like a really good point as far as like, maybe, like maybe, she, maybe she is kind of salty in the sense that like, she didn't get this kind of attention when she broke the record in 81, mm -hmm. you know, they weren't, you know, like posting her all over ESPN and, and talking about how this, you know, woman was doing all these great things for, you know, women's sports and women's basketball and that kind of thing. But I definitely, I, I, I think the thing that bothers me the most is that like, like setting a record is great, right? Like, I, I don't think anyone's going to like downplay like how amazing it is to set a record and put your name kind of in the history books. Cause honestly, even, even if you set a record and that record gets broken, like people are still going to talk about you because you're in second place. You know what I mean? Like they're going to list like the top five usually when they start talking about like all time scorers and things like that, her name will continue to come up. Mm -hmm. But like, but to say she hasn't broken the record, it's like, well, well, and I guess what bothers statistically me is like, she did. It's right. you know, it's a well, more difficult. It does have the record. Too, yeah, it's, it is you know. a different game, and we all acknowledge it. It's like yeah. you post anything on social media. Dak passes, eventually will pass Tony Romo for most passing yards. Yeah, and that's a factual statement. But man, you're gonna have all the hate comments. So like, well, different game. Dak right. sucks. Like this and that. I'm like rule changes. She statistically like has more points than her and you but know, whatever but like i think it's crazy to think that like you're gonna set a record and then that record's gonna like stand the test of time and 40 years is a long time a for long a record time, yeah. to like stand and i guess me personally it's like if i was to set a record and my record got to like 40 years you i kind of i would be, be cheering people on to break my mm -hmm. record because i i would want to be there i would want to see it happen in yeah. my time and like pass that torch on and instead for some reason you know uh lynette woodard is just like not interested i guess in like the evolution of the game as far as you know from when she played to now and like seeing like the growth in the game and yeah you know and i mean women's basketball aside i think basketball in general like over the the years has like well i they've done, they've done studies and shown that like the scoring has been more than it's been in a long time. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you score more points in basketball now than you used to for sure. So, I mean, it, it was only kind of natural that eventually this record was going to fall, whether it was Caitlin Clark to do it or another player, you know, I, I think is irrelevant, but I think we all definitely agree. Like it's, it's just a bad look to not want to pass on a record and to just like, I don't know, want to take it to the grave with you or something. I just, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that you would just kind of, root against another female player to break this record when instead it should be like, man, everything that she's been doing for the sport and for, you know, women and whatever, you know, should be like celebrated instead of just kind of like gatekeeping this record. I on, guess. on that note, I don't know if you guys heard, but you know, the, the uh, women's championship game got more views than any men's championship game ever. Um, it was honestly like that women rated. that women's national championship game was really really good. It was better it was than good. the men's championship game. It was good. Yeah, was I was good. at the um, Cubs Cubs Dodgers game uh, this past 
was it Sunday whenever the game was happening? And oh, yeah. it was a rain delay. And so they put the game on the uh, on the big screen while we were waiting for you know them to resume awesome. play. And awesome. everybody was like, you know, was, everyone was tuned in. Every missed shot from Iowa, they were like, oh. And every, you know, every uh, time they hit a three or a shot, they were, you know, the crowd like was going crazy. So it was like that wouldn't happen in, uh, you know, back in that day. Like this, it's just a yeah, new era. Sure. Kalen has brought so many eyes to the game and um, you just have to applaud it. And it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, it, it sucks that it's that type of hate that, you know, that happens right now. Yeah. And I saw like all the preparation for Caitlin Clark coming to the WNBA, like the Las Vegas Aces said that we're going to play our games in T-Mobile Arena when uh, Indiana comes to play because Indiana has the first pick or whatever in preparation for Caitlin Clark. And there's all these uh, national TV games at Indiana and before they drafted. and 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 I got me thinking, I wonder, I didn't look, but I wonder if there is a like, could you go bet? Is it on the board for Caitlin Clark to go number one overall? Because it's like, I'll, oh, I'll, pull, sure. out a, I'll pull out a Vegas, second Vegas mortgage. Bets on anything. I'll pull out a second mortgage and bet it on Caitlin Clark. Yeah, like because you probably I mean, have to bet a hundred thousand dollars to make a hundred bucks or something. Yeah, but probably. It's right? like it's such a for sure thing. Can you imagine? You know, Indiana in trading too. that pick away or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's gonna dominate. I mean, too, I think. It, it's gonna be. It, she'll be fun to watch for mm-hmm. years uh and so shout out to her congratulations breaking the record uh sorry you couldn't get the national championship can't have it all i guess uh but also shout out to her uh iowa announced today that they retired her number number 22 so no one will wear 22 uh, at iowa again so congrats they already you know? retired jersey? yeah they retired her you jersey. Have to. you have to yeah right you kind of do you kind of mm-hmm. do uh, so congratulations I it was to kind of uh, quick. Them. That's kind of weird that they. I think right I away. think the board did that for for Jordan though. Like it was like the next day or like something like that. It was Probably. yeah. It's like players like that. You just you just yeah. They can't. Well, I guess they announced that they're retiring it. They'll probably have a ceremony and everything later yeah. on. Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, we can move on from the college hoops now. Congratulations to South Carolina and uh, UConn. Man, the back-to-back, too. Awesome. Good for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can talk a little bit of Mavs now. Uh, they just finished a game, what, like an hour ago or something? Uh, Dude, it was the like, Heat, how long have we been recording? Like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. No, 30 minutes ago. It's been 30 minutes, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, finished that game. Five-game win streak now. Uh, got the Pistons coming up on Friday and the final game against the Thunder on Sunday. Looks like the Mavs are pretty locked into number five as far as the West goes, which is yeah. an okay spot, I guess, for them. Uh, not the greatest, not the worst. Uh, I think I was hearing like yesterday or something, it was like 95% chance that like number five is where they'll finish. It's not very likely that they'll move up or down. Yeah. Uh, and even if they on. moved up, they would still yeah. play the Clippers. It's yeah. like you're talking home court advantage, but. Um, so. Good on them. Definitely clinched their playoff spot. Uh, kept themselves out of the play-in tournament, which I think is going to be advantageous. Give yourself a little, little bit of a break there. Um, mm. I kind of mentioned this in our uh, group text and everything. I just want to talk about it a little bit. But how amazing is it to get to watch a guy like Luca that you just know is going to the Hall of Fame? This guy is setting yeah. record after record. Uh, last week he set a record for uh, threes made in a single season. And then yesterday he sets a new single season scoring record for the Mavericks. I mean, and then uh, earlier this season, he set the uh, single game points record uh, for the Mavericks as well with uh, the 73. Yep. Uh, So, I mean, this guy, incredible, right? Yeah. Yeah. As long as he doesn't decide to go to the Lakers or something here in a couple of years. That's my yeah. fear. That is my worst fear. He that mm-hmm. he leaves just for like no help. I I feel like they've you know this year have put the pieces around him to you know at least make a run because I know they I know they went to the West Finals two years ago, but it's I know I think this team feels a little different. He has another you know star he can defer to, and you know Gafford just, too. Just having that yeah, big guy Gafford is incredible. Just for him to have those type of players and um. For you to have a Hall of Famer like this young on your home team, you know, I don't think I I can't remember because Dirk didn't. He was, you know, he was great, but 
I feel like Luca is arguably the best player in the league. And I think, you know, Dirk touched that that type of error, you know, like, you know, a few years, but you know, he was never consistently like top three. And I think he's yeah, for okay. sure top three player in the league. And just to see him break all these records and you know, to drop 73 points on my like for my home team, it's you know, it's incredible. Yeah, I'm really excited for Luca. I think um Dan, I think you're absolutely right. Like, you know, my favorite part about it, though, is that we can appreciate. Oh, Ross, you cut out. Okay, just a little bit. I think you might. It didn't say you're muted, but it. Yeah, it doesn't say he's muted, but. But he obviously can't hear us either. I can't hear us either. He was, I, I feel like he was saying we can appreciate how, you know, how, how great he is because. You know, he's 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 an amazing player, and you know, for him to for him to do that. Are you back, Ross? What's up, Ross? Oh, did I cut out? Yeah, yeah. you cut out. You couldn't hear us uh, either, or whatever. So, oh my bad. Yeah, well, um, basically, just to finish, I just you know, I like that there's not an association with it. You know, kind of the but. You know, like with Tom Brady, oh, he's the goat, but you know, he does have these cheating scandals, and people are always going to have an opinion of that. But with Luca, it's so it's so genuine. You know, he's just good, and he makes everybody else around him look better. And um, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm I appreciate that we can watch it now, knowing that there's not, you know, it's not like even with Shohei. You know, now it's like, okay, is there going to be an issue with the betting thing, or you know, where's mm -hmm. that going to go, and how how long are right. people going to remember that? Yeah. You know, um, Luca, the most you really hear is like, oh, he gets mad at the refs every once in a while, but who doesn't? Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, I think they're trying to discredit him a little bit. I, I feel like whenever he has 73, I feel like, oh, anybody can get 73 with this defense. And I'm just like, then do it. Then do it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I, um, I, I can't remember what um, I think I was watching the Bulls broadcast and they were like they had just played. Um, he had just had 73 the game before and they were just like, yeah, you know, it was the defense that he was playing. That's why that's why he had 73. I'm just like. Everyone's playing against the same defenses technically. Yeah. And it's, you know why does why isn't everyone scoring seventy three points? Why isn't everyone averaging almost a triple double? And it's you know it's right. just kind of you know I get a little a little heated when I think about it. Yeah. Well, even yeah, to consider sure. the fact that like to go out there and score seventy three points in a single game, man, you've got to go out there shooting ninety percent on your field goals. You know, mm -hmm. like I mean, you've got to be like in the zone, you're not missing yeah. anything. You know what I mean? And I mean, so to just be like, Oh, anybody could do that again. I mean, even if it's a bad defense, it's like to, to have one player go out there and put up 73 points. Like they've just got, they've got to be on it. You know, they've got to be on one and you're mm -hmm. like, just not anybody's going to go out into an NBA game, even against the worst defense and put up 50 points. You know, it's just, it's, it's not going to happen. You know, you're going to have to like play basketball, but to watch a, a guy like Luca. And honestly, like I'd like to think that the Mavericks would give him just about anything he wants so that he stays here for his whole career. Yeah, yeah, um, I would think that would be likely, but you know, I've seen stranger things happen in sports and players get traded all the time. So I hope that's not the case. I would love to watch Luca retire as a Maverick, hopefully get, a couple rings in the process. Um, and I mean, you know, cause that being said, I mean, you guys have mentioned it too. He's a young guy. I'd like to think we could watch him play for another 10 years, you know, like mm -hmm. he could be yeah. here for a while, but I mean, you know, sports, you know, basketball, uh, but it is, it's definitely a lot of fun to watch this guy do everything that he's doing, setting these records um, that I would imagine won't last forever, but will last a while. 73 points in a single game is, is pretty crazy. Uh, you know, uh, even the threes made in a single season, a single season scoring record. I mean, these, these are all records that'll probably stand for a while. I wouldn't be surprised if like the three record didn't stand for too long. I mean, Steph Curry like broke that record and then broke it again and again for what, like three or four years in a row. Be a hard one to beat, I think. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I think with the way the game is being played and evolving uh, with shooting and everything, threes are much more common than they used to be. Uh, mm -hmm. So you might see that record change hands uh, sooner rather than later, but like the 
season total for scoring and that kind of thing. It, I mean, he's an incredible player. I can't wait to see him reach like the all time scoring records and, and things like that. He's he honestly, he makes watching the Mavs more fun than I had watching Dirk play. And I, and I love Dirk. Oh, you know? wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's a fair, it's a fair point. Um, but I, do you think Dan that that has anything to do with the, the different positions that they play? You know, like, I mean, Dirk yeah. had his fade away, you know, which we all I've, like seeing. I've always said this. Um, I think the big guys don't get as, don't get the love that the little guys get just cause it's not as flashy. Like, you know, in reality, Bill Russell, I mean, he doesn't get the love that Michael Jordan gets just because he was doing the flashy stuff. Same thing for, um, yeah. you know, like Tim Duncan won't get the same love as Kobe. Um, just like sort of, it's just like the little little guy, big guy, Shaq, Shaq and Kobe. People toward usually kind of lean towards Kobe just because you know it's just the the little guy getting at eighty one. Uh, I mean, he's six six, but um, as opposed to right. seven feet. But um, I mean, Dirk Dirk's my all time favorite player. So I like I've. I've seen those ups and downs of his career. So I, I'm not there just yet. You know, I was kind of want to see him do it in the high stakes moments. Uh, you know, I watch Dirk yeah. almost every year, but um, now I definitely understand what you're saying. And it's, you know, he's, he brings that excitement for sure. No, for sure. I honestly, I totally agree. And I guess, I guess really what it is for me is like, I was, I was honestly so pumped that Luca got, was it just the one or was it two seasons with uh, Dirk before he retired? Just but, one. Uh, he got one, just the one, yeah. right? That's what I thought. Um, and I was so pumped that he got that just because like I saw so much like Dirk in Luca, but it was like Luca was kind of like you're saying, Chris, he was like the faster, flashier player. Yeah, the no uh, and don't get it twisted game. because like I love Dirk's fadeaway. That jumper was amazing. He was good from the three-point line, you know. Like, I mean, he was he was fun to watch. Um, yeah. but Luca, young, man, younger Dirk. Luca's got younger that step back. Yeah, you know, and I love Luca's step back. He's he's just he's got better handles uh, and ball mm -hmm. control than yeah. than Dirk does with the ability to like drive a little bit more. And yeah. I've always been kind of a big point guard fan. I, I love Steve Nash and, and and everything. So I mean, but that's not to take anything away from Dirk. Dirk's you know game yeah. you know was his own. But kind of like really like you're both saying you know like the big man versus like your. I almost hate saying small man, but you know, cause we're still talking about like six, six in the, in the NBA and everything, but you know, it's just, it's two very different kind of styles mm -hmm. of games. And, and those big men do kind of get less attention for it. Cause it's just not quite as flashy to, you know, be in the post and, and back a man down, you know, versus, you know, that step back jumper that, uh, mm -hmm. that Luca's got or that fade away that Dirk had, you know? So, uh, I mean, you can't go wrong. I, I honestly just, I love watching Luca. I feel like just because like he reminds me so much of Duke or of Dirk, but he's got like more finesse, more speed, more like yeah, better yeah. handles, you know? Yeah. Um, so I expect to see like big, big things out of, out of him. It's going to be going to be so much fun. Uh, it's going to be a, a tough, tough fight here uh, for the Mavs going into the playoffs and everything. The, uh, the race and fight right now is for that sixth place spot between, uh, who is it? The Pelicans and the Suns are fighting it out mm -hmm. for that, that that last playoff spot and try to stay out of the play-in tournament. Um, probably it brings up uh, some hard feelings, Dan. <laughs> does it? We talk about the Phoenix Suns, man. Oof. Tell me about it, man. What's up? Oh, I was just thinking, isn't that who knocked out uh, the Mavs when Dirk won MVP? No, it's the Warriors. The Warriors. The, the Warriors. Warriors. So yeah. it was the. Because after he won MVP, they um, they lost to them. They got swept. Yeah, they, they got, got swept from the Warriors. Wait, no, they yeah, lost. No. They lost in six. They lost in six. They Was lost. it six? I thought they got yeah. swept. Yeah. They um, lost in six, yeah. No, they they just played the Suns a couple of years ago and beat them. They beat them. Yeah. Well, what was what was the year that, like that Dirk won what MVP? Year was it and, that uh, Steve Nash was playing for the Suns and and they beat Dirk. Uh, yeah, a few years. It was like, that was like 2006. Oh, no, they went to the finals in the six. So probably like 2005. 2005, 2004. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In 2006, they beat the Suns because that's when they went to the finals. Yeah, because okay. Dirk had Dirk had 53 in one of those games, and then 
I know they lost the next year after they won 67 games and lost to the Warriors. Yeah, the Mavs have beaten the Suns more often than uh, yeah. not. The they Mavs lost to the recently. they lost to the Hornets or something like that. I think you remember they played Chris Paul and all them in the yeah they lost to the yeah, Hornets. They lost to the Hornets in 08. Lost to the Rockets in there. Rockets lost to the Spurs a couple of times. Spurs, yeah, and then yeah, then they won a championship. So yeah, yeah, it's been a it's been a it was up and down. It was up yeah. and down. Do for yeah, another one. Like Do for another one. I'm totally ready. Uh, but definitely looking like teams to beat. Minnesota <clears throat> Timberwolves and Denver are leading the two top two teams in the West, and uh, Celtics and the Bucks leading the East. <clears throat> Um, Who would the Mavs play the if they fought a six? Tight race anyway. Sorry, what's that? Who would the Mavs play if they fought a six? I can't remember the the uh... Thunder. I wouldn't mind I that think... matchup. Is it the Thunder or the Nuggets or third right now? I don't know. I'll oh. say it's the Thunder. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that matchup with the with the Thunder. But hmm. okay. yeah, I like the Clippers matchup because because yeah, me too. Uh, one dominates when he plays the Clippers, and then that's the two uh, before he got his first playoff series win. He lost the Clippers twice, so he's got that mm-hmm. block. You know, he's got that monkey on his back to mm-hmm. the chip on his shoulder to to beat them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It'll be it'll be a tough race. It'll make for some great playoff basketball. But we will definitely talk more about that next week as the uh, playoff bracket kind of solidifies and finalizes itself. But uh, partially speaking, playoffs, let's uh, get into it with the Stars coming off their 50th win against the Sabres last night. Uh, man, Ross, you got high expectations here for the Stars going into the playoffs, wearing all that sweet gear? I do. Um, I actually do. And I really like our chances against Winnipeg, um, mostly because this season – Dallas has beat Winnipeg all three times that they've played and they've outscored them nine to three. So, you know, I know earlier you and I had a conversation about high scoring offenses and uh, I mean, Dallas is just tearing it up right now. They've got nine players with uh, 20 points or more, which is like one of the highest in the league, but you know, they've really won eight out of their last 11 games and then um, eight out of the last nine home games. So, um, you know, they're doing pretty good um, streak right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Super excited about it. Um, I'm think I'm more excited kind of like we're talking about watching Luca right now. I'm more excited watching this roster. You know, when you go through the roster, I mean, there's, it's like, there's three different phases of players on the team. You've got the older guys, uh, you know, Joe Pavelski, right. He was the captain in San Jose for so long and, now he's over here having a good time. You still got Jamie Ben, you know. Then you've got this kind of mid range, you know, like Hawk and Pock and um, you know Tyler Sagan and all these guys who are doing really good that have been in the league for a few years, just not as long. And then you've got the rookies, like you know these really young guys. Um, Wyatt Johnson actually scored his first career shorthanded goal against Winnipeg, and an assist uh, when they played it in November. So. Um, you know, some of the stats for these guys against Winnipeg are pretty nuts. Um, Jason Robertson uh, has only been held off the score sheet twice in the 10 times in his career that he's played against the Jets. Um, and you've got, let's see, Joe Pavelski, Wyatt Johnson, and Rupe Hintz all share the team lead with three points apiece during the series. So um, uh, Jake Ottinger has a 5-0 and o with one tie. Nope, oh, he did it again. We lost him again. Hang on, Ross. Damn it, Ross. Nope. Sorry about that. There it is. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. All right, I guess go back to Jake people... Ottinger. You you said Jake Ottinger. Uh, would you say he's 5-0? and oh? Yeah, so he's 5-0 Is that against the Jets? No, that's, uh, that's actually going to be against Winnipeg. In the last six... Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. The Jets. yeah. In his six career games against Winnipeg, he's five zero and one, and he's he's got a point nine two six save percentage. So that's, you know, I mean, that's pretty good because I was I was just looking. Ottinger's got a, a two point eight one for the season. Um, mm-hmm. So I mean, that's and that's crazy. Like we were talking a little bit about uh, you know goalies uh, and their you know uh, average goals per game they kind of give up and everything, but man, point nine that's that's awesome. 
Uh, yeah, it's really Winnipeg good. Winnipeg Jets then, is Thursday, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they're playing Thursday against the Jets at home. Um, an interesting fact too. We no, were they're all about, away, aren't they? No, I think uh, they play at American Airlines Center on Thursday. So. Um, no, no, they don't. They're all away. Versus. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just reading the notes that I I copied. Oh, you're good. From the, the you're Stars good. Just website. trying to keep it straight. Yeah. So the next well, well, last three games for the Stars, all away games, with the uh, the Winnipeg Jets, the Seattle Kraken, who's already been eliminated, and uh, the St. Louis Blues. Wait, yeah, they uh, they do play at home. They play they play at home. Do they? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I got mine from the well, Stars website. I yeah, don't know where. yeah. Oh, well, uh, then they're at home. Yeah. So. Uh, it, then this, be, this uh, particular sports network for everyone is just not uh not call them out right. call them out oh right fix it <laughs> fix it espn oh. fix it hey, if, interesting it, fact, if it says versus you're giving me bad information here you're making me look if bad it, if it says versus it's a home game if it says at it's an away game oh okay you know what you're right i am misreading this so these are all home games then you're right yeah. My okay. bad, Ross. I feel bad. We're all good, it's man. okay. I'm trying to lead We're our viewers good. astray here. I'm I'm the one who's misinformed. I'm the one who's We're misreading. Saying, I apologize. Please forgive me. I will forgive next, you. Next three games, all here at home, which is a great way to finish <laughs> when you're number one in the West <laughs> against yes. the Winnipeg yeah. Jets on Thursday, Seattle Kraken on Saturday, and uh, finishing up St. Louis Blues on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Big um, things you're expecting out of, out of these guys? Yeah, hit me, Ross. Okay, so I've got two more. So just talking about two players in particular. So I mentioned Wyatt Johnson. You know, he's like he's kind of the young kid, right? He's in that young generation. But actually, Tuesday uh, or yesterday, when he scored uh, against the Sabers, he actually tied Brian Bellows from the nineteen eighty two to eighty three season, right, for the third most points in a single season by a player age twenty or younger in franchise history. Okay. Oh, wow. Now, the only players with more in a single campaign, you know, is Bellows um, in 83-84 and then Mike Madonna. So we're talking about, oh, hey, Uncle Ken, Grandma are watching. Hey, that's cool. Um, <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, it's a pretty big deal when you're talking on the likes of like Luca with – you know, uh, Dirk. And then now you've got Wyatt Johnson is, is, is up on par and setting records, you know, with Mike Madonna, who's like the legend yeah. for Dallas. And then the last one I got, I don't know, um, you know, if you guys keep up with it, but the trade deadline just passed um, for hockey and actually the stars traded for Chris Tanev. Um, and since Tanev joined the team, I guess it's been about 15 games now, but, uh, they're 12 and three and they're sixth in um, GAA, which I'm thinking is like their attempts that they're allowed, like goal attempts allowed mm-hmm. uh, at 2.47. But in that same span, they're second in shots on goal against at 25.4. So like you said, that high power offense um, is it's backed up by a really good defense. Um, and so I'm just excited, you know, you've got the line of Sagan and Duchesne and Marchment, and that's one of those things, those guys, when they're together, it's, it's nuts. But I think what I love the most about the stars right now is you don't know who's going to score the goals. I mean, everybody's scoring and it, it makes it fun to watch and it makes it even more fun to be a fan. And that's your stars update. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, Thank for you. sure. Uh, Ashton, Chris, any thoughts? You know, I'm not, I love, I, <clears throat> sorry. I keep up with all the sports teams in Dallas. Um, hockey is one of the sports that I kind of like, it's almost like college basketball. I kind of wait till the postseason. Um, I'm, I caught, I probably caught like maybe five stars games this year. Granted, um, I'm in Chicago, so Same. it's a lot of, right a lot of Blackhawks, you know, a lot of Black Blackhawks games. I think Dallas was just in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they played them just, you know, recently, but, um, you know, whenever the playoffs comes around, that's, you know, that's when I'm locked in, you know, I'm, I'm one of those fans and I'm proud of it. So, uh, you know, and, you know, they're, you know, first in the West, uh, you know, playing really well. So I, I really just love that all the sports teams in Dallas are, you know, trending upward. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Right. Oh, no, we were talking about before the show, the, the number of years it's been. 
and stuff. I heard that on the way home. It was really cool. I don't know if you want me to share or not, but yeah, go for um, it. What's up? So it's been 31 years since uh, the Dallas Stars, you know, became a thing here in Dallas. And then the Mavericks were already here, but we've had mm -hmm. 31 seasons of Mavericks and Stars together. Wow. Um, only 11 times have both of those teams made the playoff in the same year. And then only one time did either team advance past the first round. So um, literally we've had, season? it's been like 21 years. Yeah, it was 2003. Wow. So it's been wow. 21 years since the Stars and the Mavericks both made the playoffs. Um, and uh, I, so I'm excited. Uh, I'm very excited about that. And I just thought I'd share that with you guys because, I mean, think about how long it's taken, you know, for like, yeah, I mean, sure. we thought the 10 year drought from the Rangers being one strike away was bad. And then here we are 21 years That's later. Yeah. yeah. I think sure. I, I'm just one. Of, I want to be one of those cities where, you know, you have at least two champions like each year. Cause I, I think Tampa Bay did it. Um, I'm not sure if Boston has done it before, um, you know, with hockey and, and uh, football, but, or basketball, but, I kind of want one of those years where, you know, the Rangers just won a World Series and then, oh, maybe the Mavs or, you know, maybe the, you know, the Stars or something like that, like within that range. So I hopefully one day in my lifetime that'll happen. Yeah, yeah for sure. Like we, last three decades, you've had kind of the Stars going into the 2000s, won it in 99, then the Mavs yeah. won it in 11, now the Rangers win it. So like hopefully we don't have to go another 10 years before the Cowboys, mm -hmm. before the Cowboys yeah, or sure. somebody else wins. Now we were even talking about. Um, I, I would I would love to see like a, a three, like three of the ma four major teams here in Dallas uh, manage to get a championship in the same year. That'd it's such dope. a tall order, but man, I would love to like because I'm also a fan of like just that that stuff, kind of like the stat that you just brought up, Ross. I like that history stuff. You know, it's like man, it's been you know 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years since the Cubs won a championship. You know, like yeah. I, I like we, I like hearing that like that drought stuff and like we you know did it making first first things happen and whatever you know like and honestly yeah. I I feel like one of the one of the reasons I'm probably the most excited about you know the Mavs the Rangers the Stars uh, Cowboys too man we've got some great young teams young talent, here in Dallas yeah, with like a lot of yeah. talent a lot of potential for the future. And so like, I, I feel like the potential here for us to actually win these championships and like multiple championships is, is pretty, pretty good, man. Like, and I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to like necessarily get my hopes up too much, especially like being a learned Cowboys fan for my entire life. Like I should know better, but like, man, it's, it's a pretty exciting time to be, you know, a, a Dallas fan, you know, a, a North Texas fan, you know? There's just mm -hmm. there's so much going on. 2011, and so much when, potential. when the Mavs won the championship, mm -hmm. the Rangers almost won the championship a couple of months that later. Been that year, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, Cowboy Stadium hosted a Super Bowl that year too. So this is kind of like in the same echelons of it, it's. Yeah. That's really the last time it's been pretty exciting where you had multiple teams because the Cowboys were good in 2011 too. They were, mm -hmm. or they were supposed to be, and then Romo got yeah. hurt. But I mean, they were expected yeah. to be really good. I don't remember what the stars were doing back then, but yeah, this is it's the first time since about 2011 when all the teams are kind of favored to make yeah, it for sure. Right? And I mean, uh, Ross and I were, were talking a little bit uh, earlier when we were kind of discussing, you know, what we wanted to talk about with, you know, you guys and, and the viewers and everything, but the, the level that our stars first line is, is playing at the offense uh, and, and, really like what Ross said, you know, the fact that like literally everyone on this team is scoring goals is awesome. You know what I mean? Cause it literally means anybody can score. It means we have the potential to be scoring more goals. And um, I was reading a stat that was basically talking about, I thought it was kind of funny because it was talking about um, how the stars were like averaging. I can't remember over how many games it was exactly, but they were like averaging like four goals, four plus goals a game. And mm -hmm. we're obviously kind of going on this this tear and winning all these games. And I was like, well, of course you are. You're scoring four plus goals a game. Like that's a lot. Like it's it's hockey, you know, like four you score four four goals a game in like soccer and everything, you're gonna win a lot of games. Like that's it's mm -hmm. pretty high yeah. scoring and, and the potential that your team has to keep scoring like that, like really gives you a good chance at making a great playoff push. And then on top of that, um, 
the statistics or whatever that I was reading was basically showing that a lot of these like championship teams from, you know, previous years and stuff tend to have like these really high powered offenses that are, you know, the number one scoring offense uh, in the league and their goalies don't have to be the best goalies in the league. You know what I mean? They can be giving up like two, two and a half goals on average per game through the playoffs and whatever. And you still have like great potential for winning and making a deep push into the playoffs because your offense is so high powered, you know? And I mean, Ottinger has been having like a good year. He's not been having like a career season or anything, but you know, he's, he's been on a a good run uh, the last uh, few games. I want to say like he's on a tear for like the last five games or something like that. I can't remember now, but I mean, just the way he's playing at, at you know at like a a good level i'm not i'm not even trying to say he's playing like mvp level goalie or anything right now but between like his ability right now his potential and how great our rookies and you know our first and second line are both playing for the stars man this should be a really exciting playoff series too so kind of wrapping it up there you know playoffs for the mavs playoffs for the stars i think we got some potential here to to make good pushes um, for both teams, especially if the Mavs can keep this defense up these last two weeks, man, crazy. Um, Mm -hmm. But this, this is going to be, this is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm excited to keep talking stars and Mavs uh, over the next couple of weeks and month or six weeks or whatever it is with all the playoffs and everything happening. So buckle up for that. Give us a like and follow on all social media at peak one sports and, you know, get ready to talk Mavs and stars with us and everything. So, Mm-hmm. Hey Dan, what's up, buddy? Did you say earlier we got a new sponsor? Um, no, I thought no. I heard you say that in My the bad. works. In the works with one. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah. All right, I was just thinking about it. <laughs> I was excited. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll probably actually. I mean, if you, we'll we'll do a little. I don't know, mystery, whatever. We got another sponsor that we'll probably actually end up revealing uh, next week uh, just because yeah. we're waiting on product to arrive. So we've actually techni- technically we got them a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we just haven't uh, plugged them just yet because we were waiting for product so that we can do it right. But uh, next next week we'll have we'll have a little bit of fun with that. Uh, so Sounds stay good. tuned for, you know, all the all the fun growth we got going on over here uh mm-hmm. you know me and ashton keep doing all kinds of work in the background doing trying to make this the best experience for us and y'all so you know, join us have fun you know mm-hmm. leave us a like leave us a comment tell us tell us what you like and don't like about the stream whatever uh so we'll kind of move into kind of my final topic i got a, a sub topic topic that'll go along with this but uh rangers Man, coming off a, a win tonight, 7-2, seven, seven I believe it was. 6-2, um, sorry, uh, against the A's. Um, Got to feel bad for the homeless athletics. The uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the homeless athletics. <laughs> yeah. It but, seems like uh, they have glad, a lot of Glad to see that the, uh, the Rangers managed to kind of right the ship there. They were definitely on a three-game losing streak. Uh, split that series with Houston over the weekend, uh, dropping the final two in that four game series. And then, uh, the loss last night, uh, to, uh, I can't, honestly, I, I'll probably be calling them the homeless athletics all year just cause I don't want to give a whole lot of credit or shout out to Oakland. I feel like they're really doing their fans kind of dirty, mm-hmm. but, Sacramento but I, I, honestly, I hope, I hope when they actually get to Vegas that they do like great, big, awesome things for their fans and, you know, giveaways and all kinds of stuff. I, I hope, you know, the athletics and their fans learn to love Vegas more than they ever loved Oakland, but uh, it's definitely going to make for an awkward couple of years. Cause honestly, I don't understand and I'm not going to support the whole making Oakland play in Sacramento for the next, uh, what, two or three years until the stadium's built in Vegas. Yeah. Why not just leave yeah, the stadium and have them keep playing stadium. in Oakland? I, yeah. Whatever. They uh, must've really know. wanted to get out of, out of Oakland. I mean, I the mean, way I understand it, the, owner, the ownership's been trying to blame Sacramento. the fans forever, but they're just not. Yeah, I it's think I think it's I think it's the ownership. But yeah, you, you go to Sacramento, you're going to get like ridiculous support and sellouts. 
albeit a, like a 10, 12,000 seat stadium, but that's true. You're yeah. going to just so smart because Sacramento's on that short list where they want to get a, a team, but they're, you know, getting pushed behind Nashville and, and Charlotte and Montreal. Those are the teams that are going to have our cities that are going to have teams in the next, you know, probably decade where Sacramento's trying. And, and I look at this kind of like I, I made the comparison, comparison on another show where the Hornets played in Oklahoma City. For yeah. part of the year for her, it was a Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Katrina yeah. and then Oklahoma got it. Like maybe this pushes Sacramento up to get a pro team. They're going to go out and show the support. Um, I think that's exactly what how uh, Oklahoma City got the uh, got the Thunder just off of yeah. um, just how much support they showed, and I feel like the NBA it was saw the perfect way to let them win. test that market, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, I guys. didn't mean to steal your your Ranger segment, though. My bad. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, no, I, didn't, I don't want to steal it either. So I, go ahead and we'll finish this, but then we got to talk about something that's kind of big. What's on your mind, Ross? I'm also going to uh, show off some of these. These babies just released today, 2024 uh, Tops Heritage. Some, so I'm going to open a couple news, of these while we, while we keep talking and everything. But what you got, Ross? What'd you find? Uh, so apparently... Um, the Dallas mayor, Eric Johnson, has been talking with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs about a potential move to Dallas. Apparently, the yeah, voters... Yeah, we talked about that. Did you? Okay. We talked about that on our Saturday morning show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, we can, we can talk about it a little bit if, if you want. Um, yeah. I, I It seems highly unlikely to me. And the, Chiefs the, odds, the odds of uh, another football team coming to Dallas of all places yeah. in Texas. Jerry, Jerry wouldn't have it. Well, I don't know, I man. I mean, if you think about it, think about New York and L.A. I mean, New York has two football I mean, teams. But the Cowboys has work. two football teams. I like, think it could work. It could work. But the Cowboys don't want it to happen, and the Chiefs don't want to move. So yeah. those two teams. Jerry, and you have to have unanimous – you have to have a unanimous vote, and Jerry wouldn't vote. For Jerry him. wouldn't vote because, I mean, he has the most valuable f- sports franchise in the world. And yeah, but for just another so you know, team to come split that, I don't think he would let that happen. But the owner of the Chiefs is from Dallas, and he's also hey, the Jerry. owner of FC Dallas. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah, the, Jerry, Lamar, yeah, the Hunts are from Dallas. Yeah, but Jerry Jones. Yeah, there's the tie-in, but the Chiefs don't want to move out of Kansas City. I wouldn't if I were them. No, they you know. The mayor, the mayor of Dallas, is the only one that's made the connection of, hey, they might move. Like, Money they'll, they'll make the threat to move, but but even if even if they wanted to move, Jerry would never let it happen. He's got so much pull in the NFL yeah. that I, I think it they, could work. It would work. Like you put put any sure. team in in Dallas. I think uh, the supports there, especially from people who get pissed off at the Cowboys, like Sh- screw it, I'll go be a Dallas Chiefs fan or a Dallas Chargers fan. Yeah. Uh, you'll have the support, but Jerry would, you know, never let it happen. Yeah, well, I, just, I guess I guess their lease isn't up until 2031, so I guess we got some time, anyways. For sure, yeah. but I mean, at I just that, I guess point, I personally think there's. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. I was about to say at that point, Mahomes will have like nine rings, mm-hmm. or however, right. however many he'll have. I yeah, mean, Kansas City won't let him leave. Then it just seems like there are like better landing spots in texas for like a football team that's not dallas um san antonio. in all yeah san antonio is the first one i think of because i mean they've got a huge population they love sports out there and i mean if you've ever seen or been to a spurs game man like even this year with with the spurs being terrible san antonio loves their spurs you know what yeah. i mean and it's because it's really the only major sports team that they have in san antonio you give yeah. them like a football team or something man there i mean because there's a lot of cowboys fans out there you give them their own football team and everything man I, I would imagine a san antonio football team would thrive yeah well the ufl team is uh probably the yeah most, that's true they do have that yeah that out so there they, yeah they, they have yeah. a great fan base um, so just imagine the, NFL the chiefs team. the chiefs might threaten to move just like the bills were going to move to austin uh, that that was a big deal. Like, hey, Bills, it's like a more than likely they're moving to Austin, and really it was all just to get a new stadium deal done. Yeah. Like the Bills were never moving, and I don't well, know. I, was just I, be I think excited if they going, did, that would my, that would be pretty cool. Um, my uncle's a big Chiefs fan, and um, yeah, you know, I uh, he's the watching used now. To be in Dallas. I he's I think he's in the chat. He said if they moved to Dallas, he quit watching football, but. 
I don't know. I bet I could convince them to come to a game if they move down here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's where they started. The Chiefs were here for three years. They were the Dallas Texans mm-hmm. before they moved to Kansas City. That's why the ownership is from Dallas. They're the Hunt, the Hunt family. Those cars are um, amazing. I lie. mean, it just it seems highly unlikely. And to be honest, I I can't imagine Kansas City would leave Kansas City just because like they they've got a a really good fan base. You know, I mean, I don't think they have any like issues or anything really. At, uh, really They'll get like, a deal done if Kansas or anything. If you know, Kansas but, City threatened the move because it was really just the Dallas mayor who's really talking about it. But if the Chiefs came out and said they were looking to relocate, a deal would get done pretty quickly i think because kansas city they don't want to invest 800 million dollars into upgrading the arrowhead stadium but if they were about to lose the chiefs i think things would things would be different because relocation like you've had a couple uh teams in the last 10 years relocate or more recent than that but relocation is so rare nowadays where it was like in the 70s 80s and before that it was like every other year there was a team moving or an expansion team or whatever yeah yeah cool rangers rangers how are we doing with rangers <laughs> yeah yeah right we'll get back on track sorry <laughs> no that's that's fine I, I i mean i love the topic so we can literally talk about anything that's ever yeah. scratching your brain a little bit you know um not a bad topic i just i personally don't think it's it's very likely and like ross said their lease isn't even up until 2031 anyway so you know maybe in 2030 they might be talking about moving but i would i can't imagine they would you know move states to be completely honest but yeah will the cowboys win a ring by then oh i don't know i don't know about that i mean i don't know if jerry will be around by then so maybe oh. so maybe Maybe not to be morbid. I just say, you uh, <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. So you say, I, I'm saying that we're going to get screwed in two years when Jerry Jones invests all his money into science, and they're like, "Okay, we successfully put Jerry Jones in a robot, and he's never going anywhere." Um, oh, and then we yeah. would be like, "Damn, yeah." <laughs> no offense, Jerry. I love you, Jerry. You you made the team the most popular team in the history of ever. Well, yeah, but. You know, a ring every twenty years would be nice. Man, I I, I need one <laughs> more often than every twenty years. I, three three uh, years ago, just yeah, I'll take I'll take a ring every twenty I'm years still, right now. And from this last season, uh, uh, it still hurts. It still hurts. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Chris, you need to yeah. jump off here. Yeah, I'm gonna head out, man. Gotta gotta. Work, no worries. We always appreciate bit, you man. being here. It's always are... it's always great talking to you guys. I can't wait till next week. Yeah, for sure. We uh, we'll definitely have jersey, some man. more solidified yeah, playoff stuff to talk about. Yeah, I love all your yeah. jerseys. I'll see you guys. So next week. the Cowboys jersey with an early exit is that what's happening? <laughs> you know how we do it. Yeah, you know who saw you, that coming? You know how it goes. First round exit. Yeah. yeah I'll see you guys. See you, all right, man. man. See you next all week. All right. There we go. All right. So we can wrap this up. We'll get back into this Rangers talk just a little bit. Uh, so seven and five now uh, after the win against the A's, uh, we got a little distracted there talking, you know, bad feelings about Oakland and, and their, you know, no longer baseball team. Um, yeah. Just throwing this out there. Rangers doing pretty, pretty good right now with seven and five. Um, we're leading, we're leading the uh, AL West right now. Yankees, uh, at 10 and two and Dodgers at 10 and five right now, really, really killing their, their seasons uh, with this early start. Shea Otani, Shohei Otani's got a, a few home runs under his belt and everything already too. But uh, guys, I wanted to talk about for the Rangers, Wyatt Langford. I'm probably going to be talking about him all year. It's probably even going to be the rookie card. I'm trying to chase. Uh, I got high hopes for this kid. It'll be really exciting to see him do something. And then hopefully, uh, our other rookie, Evan Carter, can hopefully kind of get it going a little bit better. Uh, Evan Carter right now, six for 33 and batting a 182. So got to clean it up just a little bit. I was definitely pulling for you there the other night. Uh, Ross got to go to the uh, Rangers game on, uh, was it Monday, Tuesday? Yes. Yeah, Eclipse Day. Yes. Yeah. And uh, 
got the uh, Evan Carter bobblehead, which uh, which I'm pretty pretty jealous about. Actually, uh, yeah, I should have told you ahead of time. Should have had you. Yeah, you got it. Show it to us. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's see that that bobblehead. All right, put me backstage Um, real quick. Yeah, you're good. Um, definitely uh, love going to like bobblehead night and everything. You know, any really anytime you can go to the ballpark and get like some swag is always a good time. Uh, Yeah. I love I love coming away with even like a towel or something like that. But all right, let's see this thing. All right, so it is oh, nice. the catch. It's a nice catch, yeah. yeah. And then on the back, it actually has a QR code that you can scan to relive the moment. And uh, so I don't know if very this will work cool, for you, but if you want, and it actually talks about it with the score and everything. But that's awesome. It, it's way, I didn't know it was the catch. Yeah, it's way cooler than I thought. Um, so here, I'll go ahead and open this up real quick. Yeah, very cool. I I really like Evan Carter. I, I you know I uh, like I said like with uh, Wyatt Langford, I kind of got high hopes for him. I I think maybe I'm just I want our rookies to be really good. I want our Ranger team to <clears throat> kind of have the uh, the future, you know, ahead for it, and j- just lots of great potential for the future. So. Um... I have the bobblehead ready for the reveal. Um, I'm taking off the protective coating. And uh, you ready? Oh, see, I didn't know you hadn't unboxed it. Now I feel a little bad. Yeah, I never, uh, I never opened it. But oh, that's amazing! The head, the head does indeed bobble. Mm-hmm. That's a great and then, bobble dude, head. Check out the check out the mesh on the back. Like it's actual mesh behind. Oh, yeah, him. that's like a great the Astros, like the Astros Stadium. Mm-hmm. I, I did not expect catch, it yeah. to have the wall. That's yeah, awesome. It's That's a really cool. great, great bobblehead. And he's even got, he's even, if you look really close, he's even got the dirt on his, uh, on his pants. Yeah. That's awesome. Really yeah. cool. Now we got to get you a shelf to put that up on now so you can display it behind you. That's a, that's a great bobblehead though. Love you got to love bobblehead day though, man. Oh, always a great promo day for, for baseball. I was, can't, uh, can't I was very excited. You know, it's my first bobblehead, um, and of all the of all the games that I've gone to, I just have never gone to a game that they did a giveaway at, um, or didn't get there early enough to get the giveaway. And so, being able to, you know, I took my son out uh, to the game and being able to get, you know, he got one and I got one. It was uh, it was pretty cool. The only thing we even made it on the video board for the first time. I've never been on the big board. Nice, you know? very but, cool. Uh, yeah, we made it on the video board, and so, and then you know, my son he kind of he kind of switches back and forth between the Yankees and the Astros for who he roots for, and um, he didn't get that from me, by the way. But so it was good for him to be able to get to go see Houston, and of course, you know, when you're taking a a kid to a game, you want them, you know, most importantly to have a good time, right? Yeah. Um, and so I really was a little bit nervous that the Rangers were just going to spank Houston like they had in all the games before and that he wouldn't enjoy it as much. But naturally, he had an incredible time getting to tease me about how his Astros beat us that night. So, yeah, I guess we'll see how the rest of the season goes. But that is. Yeah, no, I, I remember kind of going back and forth with him a little bit when we were doing a Friday night football. And uh, it was it was when uh, the Rangers were whooping up on the Astros in the, in the playoffs there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, he was, he was real confident that those Astros were, were going to win, but uh, that's all right. The uh, we just split that four game series over the weekend with the Astros. And then uh, we'll actually finish up this three game series against the A's tomorrow and then play a three game series in Houston to kind of round it out for a seven game series. We'll see who comes out best of seven, I guess. So Mm -hmm. that'll be, that'll be a good one to watch. Um, Also wanted to mention here too, just uh, Boscu just kind of was brought up and then immediately sent to a 10 day. uh, Well, it's not the DL anymore. It's the, uh, the injured list. So, but uh, I guess he's suffering a light left oblique strain. Um, Probably see him back sometime next week, but that's always unfortunate when you, uh, you know, call up a guy to, you know, replace one injured and, then he follows that up with his an injury of his own. Uh, yeah. Bats have definitely kind of cooled off a little bit for the Rangers over the the past few days. But uh, in all honesty, I like the way the Rangers look so far. We're playing well. 
I mean, we're not like leading the league with our record or anything like that, but we're playing good baseball. Uh, and not, not too much to really complain about, to be honest. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, just keep, just keep watching. It's going to be a long season, obviously. So um, we've got all that, but one of the things kind of sub topic I wanted to talk about a little bit was I feel like over this last weekend, trying to watch those uh, Houston games and even today trying to watch the uh, athletics games, it feels like even though the internet exists and accessibility shouldn't, you know, it should be pretty easy, pretty high. It feels like it's been really difficult for me to watch Rangers games since the season started, I guess. Um, I was kind of mentioning to Ashton a little earlier that just in these last two series against Houston and the athletics, the Rangers have been on four different channels. They've been on uh, Bally sports, ESPN, NBC, and I believe MLB network. And Man, is that just frustrating to me? I mean, maybe I'm the only yeah. one. Maybe, maybe I'm just. They're on Apple you know, TV, not, uh, also. Yeah, maybe I'm just not using the right streaming service that you know provides, you know, all of the Rangers games and everything. But man, it just it feels like it's been frustrating because I'm like, what channel is it on? And yeah. do I have that I mean, streaming that, service providing that channel? Like that happens when they win the World Series, and there's more. Is that what it is? To watch. I, I guess. I mean. Every team gets to be on Apple TV for a few times a season. It just happens to ha be on a time they have a national game, Apple TV. And then I think for the most part, they're on Bally's. But um, the local channels are trying to pick up some of those where they'll play on NBC sometimes. I want to say Fox. They're going to play a little bit too, more yeah. national games. But uh, Well, I just I feel bad for you guys that you have to like watch it. You know, uh, I am such a radio guy that, dude, I can go out to my car and just turn on, you know, the local radio station that covers them and I can hear every single game. And um, like so everybody has that option. What? Uh, Anybody in I mean, Dallas probably has that option. That's what I'm saying. Like, why are we worried about, you know, watching the games when we can just listen, you know, like the good old days? I mean, yeah. If you have a radio in your house or I, I i don't usually can just sit in my car and right um yeah i mean i don't really think i have a radio. i'm sure there's an app that i could get that mm -hmm. i could listen to a radio broadcast um of it but i mean i don't know i i enjoy watching the game i enjoy like seeing how the players perform and everything uh, I will admit, I think it takes a little bit of skill. Uh, I've had this conversation with like other people before, uh, like my girlfriend and stuff, especially um, where it's like, if you're not pretty well versed in a sport, it can be hard to listen to on the radio and like keep up with everything that's happening. Um, I I don't necessarily have that issue when listening to like a football game or a baseball game because I understand uh, everything going on uh, fairly well but i can understand how like for a lot of people that wouldn't necessarily be the best option just because you know it's harder to keep track of whatever but you know may maybe you're right maybe i'm just complaining about my first world problems and i should just listen to it on the radio but i pay i pay for these streaming services damn it i just want to watch the rangers game that's all i want i'm just i just want to just want to watch my teams I'm surprised that the Rangers haven't done like what UT did. Remember when uh, University of Texas made their own TV channel and it was like a big thing. Um, oh yeah, I'm I'm well, sure I'm sure they can't I mean, do that because MLB MLB network. they can't and they don't have near the the following. Texas just had the money, and even then, only like one or two games a year were on the Longhorn Network. They didn't even get they you would get like Texas and Rice, and then maybe like a UTEP game. But none of the yeah. good games were on Longhorn Network. Uh, uh, and, Long and Longhorn Network had a lot of like dumb stuff. They had li like live feeds of Bevo were very common. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they, they had very it, little. It did more content. for like volleyball and track and stuff. Like yeah, it made those games more accessible, but it swimming. didn't necessarily. It actually made Texas football less accessible because if it was exclusively on the Longhorn Network and you happen to not have the direct TV or dish network or the, or the certain package that had it, that means you didn't get to watch the, those games. Mm. Um, so it's, I guess same problem we have now. Huh? 
yeah kind of like if the i mean if the rangers did that they wouldn't have enough content to put on there where i'm sure longhorn network watching the spring football game for the texas longhorns probably gets better ratings than most rangers games i would guess just in general like what are you going to play the rest of the time um yeah and yeah i think mlb has to to have some sort of cut What's that, Ross? Was it? Did, Did we lose them? Did you freeze? I thought I interrupted him. It's just frozen. No, yeah, I did too. And then I just insulted him, back. I guess. Yeah, no, it's a. I don't know if he's there or not. Yeah, it's a good thought. Like you would yeah, think it's, just, it's a simple fix. Like just make it more accessible. Games used to be on Fox Sports Southwest and then. Bally's bought them out and then or diamond sports whatever you know the technicalities uh bought them out and they made it less accessible where unless you have direct tv direct tv stream um i know you can pay 20 bucks a month for Bally's and you get all the mavericks games the mavs figured it out one way or the other way it's nba or the mavs because now a lot of the mavericks games are on espn or abc they picked up some of those games so it's like every i haven't paid for Bally's in a while and uh it seems like the last few Mavericks games are like, oh, they're on TV where I can watch them. Yeah, for sure. I, I wish I wish something would. I know they're working on something, but uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure where that's going to go. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, honestly, you're probably right. Um, with you know, like the Rangers winning the World Series, and now like everybody kind of wants a, a piece of the pie. But I feel like that's what's like, I guess, frustrating me the most is it's like instead of like spreading it out everywhere, why isn't it just like accessible in like one spot from, you know, I, I guess, I don't know. I you just, don't get that money. I mean, they get more money I, when you have Netflix it. money, and Hulu right? and, you know, Amazon prime, you know, how many people signed up for Amazon prime to watch? I mean, to watch Thursday night football, this, you know, the same difference is like, why would we put it on, local channels when people will pay to watch it you know ratings don't care don't count as much like we don't we're not worried about the number of ratings if we, if ratings get cut in half that's fine if that half is paying to watch as opposed to everybody watching it for free you know yeah it's all a money grab now yeah for sure all right well i guess we'll just uh call it i mean i was hoping ross was going to come back to give us a little sayonara but that's all right We'll uh we'll work it out for next week. Keep working out all the bugs and kinks and everything, but not a bad episode for another great week here at Peak One Sports on the sports page. Yeah, as always, we love having you guys. Comments. Love talking everything. What's that? I said thank you for everybody who jumped in the comments and you know talked to us. Yeah, for sure. We Makes love having you guys a lot, here. A lot easier when uh, when people participate. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we love hearing from y'all. So you know, feel free to drop a comment, like, and subscribe the video and. As always, I'm Dan Boyer. That's Ashton Nix, and we will see you guys again next week. Same bat time, same bat place. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye.